Hey everyone and welcome back to another video. If you're new here, my name's Jack. I'm a designer and video maker living in London and today we're going to be talking MacBooks. More specifically, we're going to be talking about the 13-inch MacBook Pro which was released last year in 2020. The reason for this is the release of the 14 and 16-inch MacBook Pros from roughly a month ago, which has made the MacBook lineup a bit more complicated. So the main MacBooks in Apple's lineup now are the MacBook Air 13 inch, the MacBook Pro 13 inch, the MacBook Pro 14 inch, and the MacBook Pro 16 inch. So before we talk about how the 13 inch MacBook Pro compares to the other laptops in the lineup and whether you should purchase it, let's just focus on it for a little bit. So I have to say the MacBook Pro 13 inch from last year is just a great computer. It possibly is actually the best computer that I've ever owned to such an extent that the gaming PC and video editing PC that I built at the start of this year, I've actually got rid of it completely just because of how much I love this M1 MacBook Pro 13 inch. Everything that I need to do on a computer, this absolutely smashes. The M1 chip inside of it performs like an absolute beast. As mentioned at the start of this video, I am a designer and video maker, meaning I do a lot of creative tasks on my computer. The most common ones are using applications such as Figma, uh, the Adobe Creative Suite, and also Final Cut Pro for editing. Everything I do on all of these applications uh, have no performance issues at all. The one exception I'd probably make is video editing with Adobe Premiere Pro and a little bit with After Effects. Because of using this computer, I have switched my video editing software from Premiere Pro to Final Cut just because of how much better it does perform with the M1 chip. After Effects, I haven't really had the same luxury, I've still been using that. And the performance has been fine, but none of the projects I've done since owning this laptop uh, have really been big ones, so I'm yet to really push it there. But for the After Effects projects I have done so far, there hasn't been any performance issues at all. The hardware of this computer, as you'd come to expect from Apple, is absolutely brilliant. It feels great, it looks great, and I've found no faults, flaws, or issues at all. The port selection is pretty poor, however. The only ports that this computer does have is two USB-C slash Thunderbolt ports and a headphone input. This compared to the older MacBooks from about five years ago and also the newer ones just released which feature a MagSafe charging input, uh, HDMI port and also an SD card slot reader. Uh, this port selection on this computer just isn't great in comparison. It does mean that if you want to use things like an SD card slot, HDMI or the old USB-A input, uh, you are going to have to use some kind of dongle or adapter. This laptop does also feature the touch bar. It's actually the only laptop that Apple still sell that features the touch bar. When Apple first introduced the touch bar as an input method, they really hyped it up to be this very cool, exciting, new, modern thing. Uh, in reality, it really hasn't been that. I personally don't enjoy using the touch bar at all. I feel like generally it's just a bad user experience because the inputs on the touch bar are constantly changing meaning that you can't just interact with it without looking. You always need to check what inputs are showing, whether it's the function keys, media controls, specific controls for the application that you're in. There's just no consistency with it, which is disappointing considering that the touch bar has existed for about five or six years now. Uh, it's pretty understandable that in the new MacBook Pros, Apple has removed them as I feel like generally people just don't enjoy using the touch bar. It was pretty cool for about five minutes seeing your emojis up there and stuff, but at the end of the day, in my opinion, it was just a bit of a gimmick and I don't see it as a selling point for this computer. That being said, it doesn't take away too much from my experience of using it, but I would rather it not be there. Overall, this has been a fantastic computer though. I basically experienced no issues with it at all. Everything that I want to do, it performs brilliantly and it really is a joy to use. So if that's the case, why am I even asking the question, should you buy the MacBook Pro 13 inch? Because if it is so great, it would be a pretty obvious yes. Well, as mentioned, things have got a bit more complicated with the introduction of the 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pros to the MacBook lineup. If we just take a look at the pricing for all the models that Apple offer, the model that we're talking about today, the 13-inch MacBook Pro, costs £1,299 in the UK. The cheaper MacBook Air costs £300 less at £999. And when looking at the MacBook Air, 
Realistically, you're actually not getting a lot less for your money despite it costing £300 less. It has no touch bar, but I've already given my thoughts on that. The internal specifications are slightly weaker and the screen on it is slightly less bright. However, you are getting a thinner and lighter computer than the Pro. And then on the other side of things, there are the new 14 inch and 16 inch Pros. The 14 inch costs £1,899 and the 16 inch costs £2,399, both of which are not cheap computers by any means. However, you are getting superior performance, better screens, uh, more ports, a better keyboard, and a number of other significant improvements. It might seem like a fairly obvious statement that a computer that costs £600 more is going to be better, but if you consider the fact that the £1299 price of the 13-inch MacBook Pro is for the baseline of that model, so once you start bumping up the specifications, which you might want to do if you're more of a heavy creative user, then the prices become a lot more similar. For example, the model of the 13-inch MacBook Pro that I own actually did cost the same amount as the 14 inch, £1,899. That's because it has the 16 gigabytes of RAM upgrade and also one terabyte of internal storage. So what should the takeaway be from all of this information? As with all computers and just tools in general, you should always buy what fits your needs best. So if what you're going to do with a laptop is going to be a lot of browsing, photo editing, graphics design, some video editing on Final Cut Pro, I'd say the MacBook Air actually perfectly fits what you need from a computer. And for £999, it's actually an incredible deal. Plus, because the computer's been out for roughly a year, there are some great deals around on the internet for them, whether that's used for a few hundred pounds less, or even new or refurbished on some other sites, there are some great deals to be found. But if you need something with a bit beefier specifications, because you're doing things like game or app development, or uh, 3D work, or just anything a bit more graphically intensive, then I do think the new 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pros are the way to go. Before these were released, you'd likely buy a 13 inch MacBook Pro and increase the specifications. However, now the new 14 inch MacBook Pro costs the same as a 13 inch one with those increased specs. So to me, it is a bit of a no brainer. So does this mean you shouldn't buy the 13 inch MacBook Pro? Well, Kind of, yeah. If you can find a great deal on one, or pick one up used for a few hundred pounds less than the retail price, then it is still a great computer to buy. Equally, if you already own a 13-inch MacBook Pro like I do, then you should definitely not be upset by the fact that you own one. It's still a brilliant computer and is going to be performing amazingly well for many years to come. But if you are in the market for a new MacBook, then I just don't think it makes sense anymore. Despite that though, I'm sure Apple will still sell a ton of these computers over the next year. So that pretty much wraps up this video. If you found it interesting, please do click the thumbs up button. If you want to see more videos from myself, then please do subscribe. Check out my social media accounts at JackJenkinsYT. And apart from that, see you in the next one.